Tuesday morning. A Papa Roach on the radio. I'm kind of feeling it, but I, I thought I should start recording anyway. I can't help you fix yourself, but at least I can say I tried. Sorry, but I gotta move on with my own life. I can't help you fix yourself, but at least I can say I tried. Sorry, but I gotta move on with my own life. Tear my heart open, told myself shut. My weaknesses that I care too much, that the skies remind us past is real. Tear my heart open just to. I feel like today's gonna leave some scars on me. <laughs> and a number on my right shin. It's, uh, it's gonna be alright, I think, but it's probably gonna leave a scar. Oh, God. So it's uh, 6.07 a.m. Um, Tuesday, June 21st, 2022. God, I don't even know why. I'm just, like, overwhelmed with so many emotions right now. I, I, I don't know. Maybe it's the music. Maybe it was just such an overly overwhelming day at work. I don't know. Maybe it's just the... The frustration with Priscilla, although that's not a new thing at all. It's kind of a daily thing. So, um, yeah, I hardly even touched on what was up with her on my last video. And, uh, I'm gonna need to get that out now while I still remember, because I know it's just gonna go into the blur of bitterness, you know, and, and soon, and I won't remember the details. That's just the way my brain seems to work, but... But, um, um, oh, and last video cut off because ran out of space. I, I, I did a little maintenance on that. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get more on top of that. I swear I am, um, with this phone because I'm kind of stuck on the SIM card not working on the other phone. And I, I'm not hearing back from Jeff, so not the first time that's happened. Uh, and I wish I had somebody else who could help me with that, and I, I, and I guess I could do some research and try to do it myself, but I feel like I'm way out of my element with that. And, and I've watched Jeff work on phones, and generally he's like hooking them up to a PC and doing stuff over the uh, USB, and I don't have a PC to do that with, so there's that as well. Um, anyway, um, the Priscilla thing... Uh, Yeah, so yesterday morning, about this time, uh, you know, I was really thinking about going to the bar, more of a celebratory thing than anything, because yesterday I was like the hero of the day. I, uh, two hours, hour and a half away from the end of the night, about maybe two hours away from the end of the night, it looked like there was zero chance of us coming anywhere near meeting goal for the night, uh, you know, for the whole inbound crew. And 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 then some stuff happened, and I kind of covered it in my last video that that uh, that it that, that we did, and I was a very very instrumental part of that. It's really sad there's not a sidewalk for them to be on. Um, anyway. Uh, Anyway, I'm just gonna go slow and yield them the right away because I'm it's just I'm so overwhelmed right now anyway, and I just don't even feel safe trying to drive drive around them. Um. Anyway, where was I? Um. Yeah. So. So yeah, it was it was kind of exciting, although I didn't really have anybody to kind of share my my joy with, and I didn't do a video. 
Anyway, I got home. Priscilla was actually there, fully clothed on the couch, which is pretty, pretty usual. That's kind of the usual for her. And um, at this point, I don't even try to, to touch her, or get her attention anymore. It's just, it's just become clear that that's just a, a dead end, and um, and just an exercise in frustration. So. Um, I um, I did um, I, I just I just went I just went to bed um, and actually I was pretty overwhelmed and I ended up falling asleep pretty quick. Um, at one point I heard her alarms going off and I kind of walked in and I looked and she was all crashed out on the couch and part of me was thinking you know maybe I should wake her up so she gets to work on time and then part of me was like. Nah, she told me not to touch her. So if she can't wake up to her alarms and get to work on time. Then you know that's that's her that's her deal. And um, eventually the alarm stopped. And she didn't get up. And I just went to sleep. Um, I'm so frustrated with that situation. I just it's you know I I love I love what's going on at work. I absolutely am loving my job. I, I and it's funny because like one of the things I, I farted around quite a bit on Reddit yesterday, and I didn't get to voice my opinion because it was an R Phoenix, and I'm still muted there, but I still read it. And in R Phoenix, there was this huge discussion about how how awful Amazon is and how awful it is to work at Amazon. And one of the uh, it, and it was it was somebody posted a link to an article. I didn't even read the article. But basically, it was a local article saying that that by 2024, Amazon will have exhausted all available labor for their facilities here in Phoenix. And I don't I don't know if there's truth to that or not. Anyway, I, and, and honestly, right now, like working at I mean the show at the show at Bullocks is going amazing. Like that's that's amazing that's also only one day a week but amazon i mean amazon is kind of my rock right now and and things are going fabulous there it's by the fact that there were some mishaps last night which i'm not even going to talk about um um oh so what are the odds of priscilla being home Oh my God, there's her vehicle. I fully expected that she would not be here when I got here. Um, I still need to go get a drink and get breakfast, so I'm gonna keep on driving. I just kind of wanted to know if it's 6.13 in the morning, if her vehicle was here, and it is, and I'm genuinely very surprised. Um, well, there's more furniture just randomly appearing here. Um, Apparently, this is the neighborhood area to dump furniture. Um, still mixed feelings about the furniture that was there the last time when the city came and picked up all the bulk trash because I wanted it and I had no room for it. I don't need it. It just makes me sad to see such nice furniture going to landfills. And there's so many people that could use some nice furniture. Um, anyway. Anyway, so, so, I'm getting sidetracked just thinking about this thing and all these people just talking so bad about Amazon. And one thing I did see positive where somebody had talked about um, two things that I, I really had to agree with, and one of them was positive, and one of them was not so much negative. It was just kind of, well, it just kind of was what it was. Um, but they said one of the things that they felt that because they were talking about Amazon having a uh, turnover rate of 150% and how that's really bad, uh, even worse than McDonald's. And and then somebody had commented on that, that yeah, well, a lot of the problem is they're hiring, that they just basically hire anybody that's willing to apply, that you know passes their apparently not too strict background check because I'm working for them. And <laughs> speaking of which, oh, God, moment of comic relief tonight. So, um, no, I don't want to get sidetracked on that. Hopefully I'll get back to that. But anyway, I'm trying to remember background check and uh, comic relief regarding my background. Anyway, um, yeah, so um, 
God, I'm the guy driving up 46 like I'm in a school zone. At least I'm not holding up any traffic behind me. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, oh, look, there's a house for sale in the corner. I <laughs> wonder what that one's selling for. I'm going to say $650,000. Um, one block south of Virginia, quarter of 46th Street. Going to Zillow it <laughs> when I get home. And hopefully I remember to mention it in the next vlog. I'm, I'm saying $650,000. That's my uh, that's my guess. Um, anyway, where was I? Uh, yeah. So um, anyway, the person commented that, that you know that they literally hire anybody, which actually there there is a background check, but it's not very very crucial. Um, it was it did stop me from getting the driving gig that I was going for earlier, which wasn't even with them; it was with a third party. Um, and it did. Um, but it didn't stop me from getting on at the warehouse. And um, so, it, it, and consider, you know, that my background check, and, and it was my driving record that stopped me from getting that. It was nothing else in my background. Uh, the Amazon background check, you know, got, got me into the warehouse. I mean, I've been there like, you know, five months now. Um, but like the, uh, the other one, um, the, the, uh, Um, other, um, I don't even know where I'm going. I'm just driving, just letting my brain drain. Uh, the, um, other, um, um, anyway, my background, um, yeah, it's interesting I got hired because, I mean, my background was enough that I didn't get that I, there's enough bad in my background that um, Airbnb canceled my, my account. And mind you, I wasn't even one of those persons that was, you know, I'm not renting property. I, I'm just as a renter to rent a room in an Airbnb or to rent a place through Airbnb. And due to background check, they canceled. Um, also, and I know I've vented about this. I was venting about this. I used to vent about this all the time, like a year ago on this vlog. Um, but I, I haven't been talking about it much because I'm kind of at a place where it's not holding me back. But it, it had. And um, my background also stopped me from uh, definitely for driving for Lyft, um, driving for DoorDash, and I want to say Postmates. Um, I don't know if I ever finished my application with Uber. I, I just figured after the other ones that cut me down, I just kind of stopped with Uber and thought, you know, that when I finish my application with Uber, the game plan is to use my daughter's address um, in, in Oregon. Because the Oregon does have some laws that prevents employers, wow, 569 a gallon, 599 a gallon for diesel. Damn. And I'm just sitting there driving around killing time. You know, it's an expensive thing to do right now, but one thing I said a lot when I was walking that was making me crazy about not having my car was that sometimes this is, oh wow, some new uh, residential stuff going on right there. Hey. Um, that this is one of the things that I do to unwind and not so much vlogging on it, although I've done that in the past, come to think of it, before the whole nine months of no no vehicle, but um, you know, even before I ever vlog, like sometimes I just drove around and talked to myself or just let my thoughts go just to try to unwind and decompress and um, and um, yeah, it's uh 575 a gallon gas be damned um it's just kind of what i need to do right now and i may stop recording i may run out of space <laughs> but um i've already completely derailed my train of thought oh background checks yes background checks um yeah uh oregon has has a state law that prevents them from going so far back and and most of my stuff is way far in the past but it does get kind of ugly once you get you know at the 20 the 20 to 30 year mark in my history it's it's got some pretty pretty intense blemishes in it um 
and and it's really kind of messed up that I'm uh, still in so many ways being discriminated. Yeah, 555 at Circle K, that's a little bit better. <laughs> Every time I slow down, there's a voice in the back of my head telling me to lower my Fords. Oh my God, what is happening to me? Uh, all right. Um, God, I wish Gypsies did first call. I'm, I'm thinking first call bar it is. I know Priscilla's home. There's nothing good coming out of that. And, and I, I'm way too wound up to go to bed. And I just, yeah, I think I'm going to go to... I think I'm going to just go over to, to Wander Inn. Hopefully I'll conclude something I was talking about. But probably not because I'm pretty close. Um, anyway, Reddit. The... the talking about how they pretty much they hire anybody without doing any kind of real interview to find out, hey, is this person suited to be working in a warehouse or suited to be, you know, good for, you know, obviously for management positions is different, but, you know, just suited for the entry level positions that hire, that, that Amazon does these mass hiring things for and that their, their third party um, contractors do these massive, you know, intake hiring for. And, and, and they don't. Uh, they just do a, a background check that obviously isn't as thorough as as Lyft um, and and and, and um, a drug test that apparently does not check for weed because uh, many of my poor co-workers are massive potheads um, I mean I was clean if it checked for weed I would have you know I would have passed it but um, but uh yeah, a lot of my coworkers are massive potheads, and it's my understanding that they passed it in spite of being massive potheads. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, I'm just trying to get back to the, oh, nice blazer. Now, that's a proper SUV. Hell yeah. Um, anyway, um... Anyway, we're saying that that's the problem. That that's one of the reasons that there's such horribly high turnover at at uh, rate at Amazon because they don't really tell people what the job's going to be. They don't really give an interview process or anything. They just take everybody in and just and and, and, and like right now we we're back to having massive massive intakes uh, at GYR three. There's a giant giant group of new recruits every Sunday night and every Wednesday night and, and I uh, it takes all the inner strength I have within me every time I roll by them when they're going in mass around the warehouse or when they're they're having their little learning like this is whole area where it's like a little uh, I want to say like a little auditorium it's not an auditorium it's an open space but it's got you know chairs arranged like a little auditorium and they're giving a presentation and and it takes everything within me not to just yell out, oh yeah, fresh meat, every time I roll by that, because that's kind of how it is. Um, it, uh, it do be like that sometimes. But uh, yeah. Um, anyway, you know, this person who pointed out that, you know, maybe that's part of the problem, one of the reasons that they have such insanely high turnover is that, that um, you know, maybe instead of, they, it's, they, they, they just hire just so much and just see who works out. But then somebody else had commented, and I don't think it was in the same direct thread, but somebody else had commented on, on this large post on, on our Arizona, or sorry, our Phoenix. I'm allowed to talk in our Arizona, but there's never anything interesting in our Arizona when I look there. Um, anywhere in, in uh, our Phoenix, um, somebody else had commented that, that, you know, that... It, that that uh, that yeah, while Amazon isn't for everyone, that that kind of hiring process sometimes is good for some people. And and they mentioned that they had a friend, weren't coming from their home, and said, "Well, I got a friend that's been working for Amazon for two and a half years, and he loves it, and he always had trouble keep finding and keeping jobs prior to working at Amazon." And I mean that's, I wish I could have commented on that because that's kind of me to a T. Um, so I, I still seem to be excelling and I'm, 
let's just say that there was an incident tonight. I'm not going to go into any more detail than that. Um, there was an incident tonight, and um, procedure wasn't followed because uh, procedure would have probably been pretty disastrous for me. Nope. What happened is, I would say, four co-workers, one of which is a supervisor, basically conspired, <laughs> maybe more than that, but that's just the immediate vicinity, as I was almost in tears, um, to help make all evidence that that happened go away fast. And um, I was ready for my third break anyway. I went and took my break and tried to decompress from it. And I came back and I did really well after that. Changed tasks, did something different. I don't think what happened was my fault at all, just for the record. But um, Amazon does have a reputation for just firing people when shit happens because shit happened. So, um, um, anyway, I said I wasn't going to talk about that. I'm talking about that. I'm sorry. I've already said too much. Um, anyway, I'm in that. That's all I was really going to say about that. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for it. And, and the fact that that happened the way that it happened as opposed to what was supposed to happen when that happened. I mean, that's that I just felt a real outpouring of love and support. And, oh, my Lord, Dan, we've got you. We have so got you. We're not going to let you fall tonight. And that's not something that I feel very often. So that was, that was pretty exciting. Um, um, I think that's the owner of the bar just walking in the front door to the right. I need to wash my hands. I'm filthy. I normally wash up before I leave the warehouse, but I was just, I, I left a few minutes. I probably clocked out about six minutes late, and I just needed to. I was kind of hoping to talk to somebody I worked with tonight, yeah, but um, everybody had either left or was kind of congregating with other people. So I rolled out alone. Kind of back roaded it today. I noticed an excessive amount of traffic on the I 10, and I kind of wish I'd have vlogged to show the route, but. Um, Roosevelt doesn't entirely go through, but I more or less used Roosevelt all the way from the warehouse to 43rd Avenue and actually drove on some chunks of Roosevelt I've never used before, like never even in the course of my being a cab driver, including one stretch, uh, the stretch between 51st Avenue and 43rd. I don't know how I've never noticed like how unusual that particular stretch of Roosevelt is and that I've never used that as a back road. Um, to be fair, that's not a section of town that I ever drove cab in a lot, but I mean, I went everywhere, but somehow I've never been on that stretch. It's a neat stretch of road. Um, enjoyed that route quite a bit. Um, anyway, I should really go into the bar, but, uh, I do want to finish up, just get my thoughts about what happened with Priscilla this morning. So as I said, I, I, uh, I saw her oversleep her alarm. And, um, just, uh, like, well, whatever. You said you don't want me touching you, so if you're oversleeping for work, you're oversleeping for work, and it's on you, so. Uh, you know what I would like to be happening? <laughs> if, if my relationship was how I would like it to be, and I'm sure she's got things of how she would like me to be, and I'm nowhere near it. I've pretty much told her to kick rocks on that, so at least we're even on that. But... In, 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 in the, if Priscilla was wifey material, how would she be when I got home? <laughs> Naked, for starters. Um, not ever spelling of cigarettes. Put that on the list. I would never marry a smoker. Period. Daniela was a non-smoker. That was a big deal to me. Um... At times, I actually considered marrying Elise, and uh, as batshit crazy as she is, and as how just not physically attractive as she is, there were times that I had with Elise that were really, really good times, and there were times I thought, you know, maybe 
what we do have is better than me being with somebody I'm physically attracted to. But my hang up with that is that I, I know if I'm with somebody that I don't, that doesn't hit me on that level of physical attraction, I'm going to cheat on them. I just know I am. It's just how I'm wired. It's just, it's just, it's. It, you know, it, 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 if if all I got is if the only meat I ever get to eat is spam every day, it doesn't matter how much I like spam. When filet me on comes along, I'm gonna eat it, especially if it's just given to me. Is what it is. Um. Anyway, where was I? Um. Yeah. So a uh, perfect world now, <laughs> perfect like relationship with her now. I would like it to be is, I wish, I wish when I got home she was naked in my bed waiting for me and just, just not necessarily awake but wanting to be woke up by my touch. I mean, I, I liked what was going on with Crystal, where she always woke up before I got there and opened the door for me, you know, naked and ready to see me and ready for some uh, <laughs> intimate times if I was clean and ready to, you know, pour me a bath and help clean me up before we have those intimate times when I'm filthy like I'm filthy today. Um, although it was crazy how she, like, went went all aggro on me the one time that I did, you know, come home and then, or, you know, come home, go to her house and, and I was, and I was clean. And then she accused me of not going to work. She accused me, oh, well, I don't even think you went to work. I, who, what, who did you go to? Who you, who you, who you with? You know, it's like, you know what? I can't deal with that kind of jealousy. And, and I'm sure that's, that, and that's what, you know, like Crystal and I, that's the number one reason I think Crystal and I didn't really last. Although I've never got much in the way of explanation. I did say at one point I was going to read the text messages from her. And, um, and of course, now I never will be able to do that because that was on Obama phone number one. It's, and it's gone. But, boy, I would think they were fucking nuts. I mean, she stole my Samsung phone, the one I got from the homeless woman on the bus. You know, she said she threw it away. And I, at first I thought she was kidding. But I, I at this point, I really think she did. I don't think she understands the value of stuff. Um, some people just don't. Um, oh my goodness, the manager is here. I've been wanting to talk to her. <laughs> she just looked at me and gave me a funny look and waved. I wonder if she recognizes me. <laughs> I have a really weird, contentious relationship with the manager of this bar. We get along, but she's told me before that she thinks I'm a pretentious asshole. Okay, I'll own that. That's fine. I'm not conceited. I'm just convinced. <laughs> it's that BDE. I can I can only contain it so much. Uh, anyway, she. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's that's what that's what things were like with Crystal, and um, but yeah, she she accused me of you know just like well who I don't believe you went to work I don't think you went to work I think you were out sleeping around with some other person blah blah, blah. no no really I went to work but you're not all dirty the other day you came home all dirty yeah the other day I did pallets all night last night I was a line loader all night. Depending on what you're loading, you can stay pretty clean as a line loader. Not all boxes are dirty. Some days I don't get dirty at all as a line loader because I'm just I'm just getting clean boxes. <laughs> it's you know, runs the gamut. I mean, if everything I'm getting is like anyway. Back to Priscilla. Um, yeah, like what I'd like it to be like is I just wish she was asleep in bed and waiting for me to just climb in and. wake her up by making love to her and then she was receptive to that I've, I've had relationships like that in the past I used to have a relationship like that with her but it, it's not there anymore um, that would be perfect intimate time you know and then we could maybe afterwards 
just have a little quality time, just her and I in the bed, bedroom chit chat, whatever. Just have our us time before I ask, she has to get up and get ready to work, and I just need to go to sleep or maybe backtrack to QT and get some breakfast. I mean, damn, maybe if she was more about being with me like that in the morning, I'd stop and get breakfast for her too on the way, you know? Bring her breakfast in bed, but no point in me getting breakfast for two and I have no idea like what her attitude is going to be to me and most of the time it's just pretending I don't exist so um and a lot of times she barely wakes up in time to just to go directly like get ready for work she just like rushes into Lily's room and just logs on and then suddenly I hear her chat 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 she's working so I mean, she's got a job, she can do that, I guess. Um, so, uh, God, I talked over 30 minutes, I still haven't reached any conclusion. Anyway, that's how I wish things were. That's not how they are. Um, so I, I, I just let her sleep, and I'm thinking, Man, you know what? Whatever. She, uh, you know, she loses that job, that's on her. She's the one that said she doesn't want me touching her in the morning, so I'm not touching her in the morning. I'm not, just not going there. Um, I dozed off, went to sleep. Now, at one point, I, I heard her mucking about in the bathroom. I could hear, hear her going to the bathroom and hear that she was up, and I thought, oh, well. I looked at the time, and it was about, oh, I want to say nine a.m., 9.15-ish, um, and that woke me up, and I laid there and I listened. At one point, it got quieter, and I thought, I wonder if she's in working and just doesn't have calls, so I walked out just to look and see what was up with her, see if maybe she went back to, well, what up? I got up, and she was sitting, she was sitting in, 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 in her nest on the couch in the living room, doing something on her on her cell phone, she's always doing something on her cell phone. And I thought it was weird that she wasn't just rushing to go to work since I think she normally has to log in at like 7.30 or 8. Um, and, and, um, and it's like, you know, after nine. But, and I thought, well, maybe she's got doctor's appointments because I know she's been having a lot of, you know, she keeps saying she's having these medical issues. I don't really understand most of them. And I'm not even, my, my capacity to care about it is dwindling. And it just kind of is what it is. Um, but, um, so I thought, well, maybe that was going on. Anyway, at that point, I just I just turned around and went, you know, I mean, because I was in bed. Like, once she got up, she could have, come and came and joined me in bed but she went back to her nest and got on the uh got on her phone was tap tap tapping on her phone and i went back and i laid down and i quickly re you know within like 15 20 minutes i just realized I, I wasn't gonna get back to sleep so i walked back out into the uh down the hall and i looked and she wasn't in in lily's room but she's turned into her office and it wasn't she wasn't yeah, I walked through the kitchen, and she was gone. Her SUV was gone. And I thought, well, that's weird. And that's when I shot the first video yesterday. It was after that, I was like, well, I'm up. I may as well get dressed, go to the clinic. I'm actually up during, you know, clinic times. So go to the clinic. And, and I, I did that. I mean, I vlogged on the drive there. Um, and by the way, I didn't really talk about that, but everything was pretty cool there. Uh, I did I did have a meeting with the benefits specialist, and uh, yeah, I make way too much money to get food stamps. I, I, and like when I started telling him, you know, when he st I started going through my bank, and he's like, he goes, and that's that's net. I'm like, yeah. He goes, so what's your gross, you know, before taxes? And I'm like, I don't know. And he goes, well, it'd be based on your gross. So if you're taking home that, which I think puts you over, like your gross has got to be a lot more. And I'm like they're going to want pay stubs. I'm like, yeah, I don't get pay stubs. I just get a directed deposit. So there's a digital pay stub somewhere, but I don't even know how to access it. it it's something on a website or something. I don't know how to do it. <coughs> so honestly, I just feel more comfortable not knowing how much the government is stealing from me. So um, he just kind of laughed with that. He goes, well, you definitely don't make enough. But I said, well, you know, this is why I wanted to come in and talk to you. Just said, And then he told me that 
the amount I was getting in food stamps before, which was fairly substantial. He said that that was a temporary COVID thing and that's expired. And that people, uh, a single guy like myself, even if I did qualify for it, it'd only be like 50 bucks or something like that, which wouldn't be that much of a game changer. So, you know, whatever. Um, but now I know, it, it, you know, that is what it is. Obviously, I don't want to make less money. I mean, just, but thought it'd be neat if I could still get him. I can't. Now I know. But I had a great time talking with him and stuff. I mean, he remembers where I was when he helped me get him before. And, um, and um, you know, so it was kind of nice to do, just catching up with him. And he's just really glad to see me doing so much better. Um had a meeting with my therapist, not a meeting meeting, but I, I scheduled an appointment for next week and we did a little bit of catching up and uh, that was good. Uh, also had a had a, a chat with the, I don't even know what her position is. She's kind of like the main receptionist and and sometimes like kind of points me in there, like, no, Dan, you should do this, you do that. And she's she's never steered me wrong. She's been, a, you know, just a very supportive person for me. Um, did tell me that my my case manager still has not been able to come in and work in the office. Um, so apparently she's still incapable of walking, still working from home, but I haven't heard from her in a while. I did tell her about the uh, case manager or somebody from the team that that was so insistent on pounding on my door that they pulled Priscilla away from work when she's supposed to be working at a time when she's not supposed to take a break and was so insistent on talking to me that she woke me up and that, you know, how that was the equivalent, you know, with me working graveyard overnights, especially at that time when I wasn't driving and I got so vid very little sleep because of the amount of time I spent riding the bus to and from work that that was a really fucked up thing for her to do that, you know, if they're going to do a home visit, they need to understand that they need to make an appointment with me. They can't just... I mean, if they want to knock on the door and I answer, that's one thing. But to be pounding on the door to the point of disturbing my neighbors and causing a problem for my girlfriend while, while she's, you know, working. I actually called her my girlfriend. <laughs> I got jokes. And, and 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 then waking me up when I absolutely need my sleep because I work a kind of dangerous job at night. Um, yeah, not cool. She's like, she's like, yeah, I'll definitely make sure a message gets through the team about that. And then she told me to make sure that I still keep getting my bus pass on time when I'm supposed to get it. That way, if I do find myself without a car again, which could happen at any time because this thing is old and God knows how many miles are on it, um, that it's, uh, that it's, um, yeah, that if I fall off the list of people that get bus passes, I might have a hard time getting back on that list when I really need it. So, um, and granted, it's not a whole lot of money. It's not something amusing, but it's a it's a safety net that I, I feel I'd really be missing if I didn't have. So um, I should have found out when my next doctor's appointment is. I don't know, but I'll be there next week and see my therapist and hopefully get back into the groove at the clinic there. That's a good thing. Um, got home from the clinic. I fully expected that Priscilla would be back working or would, you know, so I was really surprised that when I got back, which I'm not sure what time I got back, but I want to say it was gone for maybe about two hours, um, at least an hour and a half, probably closer to two hours. I got back around noon-ish, 11.30-ish, something like that, 11-ish, I don't know, I forget what time I got home, but at any rate, she wasn't there, and... Um, and I'm just like, you know, whatever, went to sleep. Um, I woke up, I want to say about 5.45 p.m., which is basically the la the latest I can wake up. Like, that that puts me on the track of just check my incoming messages, wash up a little bit, get in my, you know, get, get ready for work. And I forgot my damn safety vest. I didn't have any problem getting another one, but still, like, that's how not focused I was get ready for work and, and head out and I was really surprised that she wasn't there and then I remembered the conversation that her and I had had about oh you mean Amazon's open on on Juneteenth not to be confused with Juneteenth but actually Juneteenth observed which was yesterday and I'm like uh yeah Amazon's open 24 7 365 and she's like oh well, you're working? Yeah. I'm curious if I'll get holiday pay. I did get holiday pay for uh, for um, Labor Day, and it was it made for a nice bonus on my check. So um, 
I'm, I'm hoping, I say check, direct deposit. Uh, I'm hoping that that also counts for Juneteenth, but I highly doubt it. Um, Amazon loves to be woke unless it involves paying their employees more. Uh, yeah, but they'll put a lot. Of, you better believe there are rainbows all over the warehouse right now for Pride Month. Um, anyway, um, yeah. So, so I really didn't expect when I started this video and I when I got home and I, I really didn't expect her to be home. I honestly figured she just went wherever she goes that she won't tell me about. And. Um, I don't know if it's other man or what. Maybe it's just a friend that she likes spending time with, which, you know, got to admit, I'm kind of <laughs> kind of jealous. I mean, not that I don't have friends I enjoy spending time with, but, you know, all the, all the friends I do have are just so busy and wrapped up with their own lives and their own work schedules that I just don't, I just don't see them very often. So, um, yeah. I mean, I get little, little texts, little chats on Snapchat from time to time, and that's, that's you know, that's, a few times I get to spend with the friends I have are far and few and far between these days. Um, you know, other than the people I meet at the bar, you know, are they really my friends? Kind of feel like my friends, but, you know, I don't know. It's different. It's different because I'm not going to their homes. Um, so, um, God knows I can't invite anybody to mine just because Priscilla's got the place such a freaking wreck. Um... And then God knows when she's there, and I just don't even want anybody there when she's there because it's just such an uncomfortable situation. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's pretty much the long and short of that. Um, I have no idea when she came home. I know she wasn't there when I left at about 6.20-ish. Um, the fact that she was there when I rolled by at 6.20 p.m. Yeah, I should clarify that. Actually, she was there when I rolled by pretty much tells me she probably stayed the night there. So, but I don't know. I don't know why I obsess over it. I, it, it, it I, I should just really get to the point I don't care, and I'm working on that. I am. Um, anyway, God, I'm 42 minutes. Why do you watch this for 42 minutes? <laughs> anyway, because um, that mural of the beers at the end of the snake is awesome. Um, yeah. Um, comic relief. I should end it with a comic relief. <laughs> Back to my background check. Uh, so the lead... Now, they kind of were trying to make me the lead... Um, uh, the lead pit driver... Forklift operator... Um, Sunday night, Monday morning. And there was just hardly anybody there. It was a really low amount of people working. And um, the, uh, I guess a lot of people took it off, whatever. Um, and also uh, there was, uh, uh, yeah, in fact, the guy who's normally the leads normally on that shift, he told me he was in, he went, oh, he told me where he went and I forget. I think he went to California, like to the to the beach. It sounded like he had a nice little vacation, so that's awesome. He was there tonight. Anyway, we we had it. We didn't chat much tonight, but we chatted a little bit at one point. It's sometimes for like, like in the area where the where the forklifts operate, like there's very specific safety rules about how we have to pass each other. And um, she uh, she uh, yeah, it's the older bartender here. Um, she uh, just came out for a smoke and <laughs> waved at me. Probably wondering what the hell I'm still doing sitting outside. Uh, so she, um, uh, um, brain fart. Uh, Oh, yeah, what was I saying? And so we're in this area, and a lot of times, like, there's very specific safety rules about how we have to pass each other. Um, Obviously, we just don't go zooming by each other because that's kind of a safety hazard. And there's a very specific procedure which involves one person stopping and yielding and waving the other one by um, when you're within a certain proximity. And obviously, and also, I guess it's not so obvious if you don't operate a forklift, but your forks have to be down. Um, I, I've kind of made an exception to that and I don't know if I'm breaking a safety rule or not but sometimes 
when my forks are up because I'm stacking pallets. I'm still generally the guy that's loading the wood pallets. Um, yeah, sometimes I'm straightening them out or I'm stacking them and somebody's coming and everybody, had, I'm in the spot where the, everybody has to pass if they're going to the charging docks, uh, charging docks. So, you know, from the loading docks to the charging, charging bays, charging docks. And, and because when I'm stacking, if I, it's such an ordeal for me to get out of the wood and then lower my forks and then get out of the way because at the point where I'm doing that, like I'm in their way, if I just stop there with my forks down, I mean, I guess I could put it in the bottom pallet, but that's extra work. That's tedious. Sometimes I, I do just wherever I'm at in the stacking, I just put my forks all the way into the wood and I come to a complete stop and then I wave them through. Uh, if anybody actually gives me a warning about that, I'll be like, oh, my bad. Seems safe. But uh, anyway, um, so sometimes like I'll, I'll chat, have a little chat, you know, with whichever other um, forklift drivers, you know, might ask a question if there's something I'm curious about or they'll, you know, they sometimes ask, well, how are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's getting a little more cordial with uh, uh, Larry, the uh, the main, like who's the, the main, he's the lead, kind of runs the the other, you know, kind of directs the other forklift drivers. Although he doesn't direct me much because 90% of the time I'm just working on wood. <laughs> I'm the pallet guy. Shit, one of my coworkers yesterday told me that, oh yeah, yeah, a lot of people just call you pallets. <laughs> I'm like, just pallets? Like, oh yeah. It's like, they're calling him, like, like you know, his name's Daniel. He's a pretty nice guy. You should talk to him sometime. But, <laughs> I'm like, oh, pallets. That's fine. I've earned that. It sounds a little derogatory, but whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll own it. I'm cool with that. It, 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 it fits. Um, yeah. So, I'm trying to get the comic relief moment, because dang, I went like 47 minutes on this stupid video. But, uh, got a lot to say today. Um, anyway, I'm rolling by him. Oh, no, I remember what it was. I wasn't rolling by him. I actually went to talk to him because somebody had asked me to, to unload a truck, but I wasn't... One of my supervisors, I'm forgetting which one, had said that she heard on the radio that they needed a driver to unload a truck. And I'm like, okay, who should I talk to? And she goes, uh, she goes, I'm not really sure. Probably talk to Mia or Larry. I'm like, okay. So I go in and I find Larry first and I ask him about it. But actually before I found him, I found another forklift driver and I don't know his name, but he spends a, an obscenely large amount of his time. It's crazy how some people just get bothered so much if you're taking, if it just seems like you're not working, you know, if you're standing around or you're talking or whatever. This guy spends an unbelievable amount of time just sitting on his forklift, reading books. It's not, not moving, not loading, just... And he's waiting to be asked to do a truck, and I'm thinking, well, dang, if this guy's available... Like, I saw him, and I said, well, hey, I, I heard that we needed trucks unloaded, or, but you're sitting here reading, so I'm assuming that everything's caught up? He goes, oh, yeah, I think so. I'm like, okay. And then I saw Larry was further down. I figured, well, maybe I should go, you know, talk, ask, just ask him, you know, since I'm getting conflicting stories. So one person saying, hey, I hear they need, you know, somebody to unload trucks. And then, and I can do that. I'm kind of new and still learning, but I'm, you know, I'm down. I'm, let's do this. But if it's a choice between him and me, it seems like the obvious choice is him because I do have a lot of work to do with the wood pallets. So what's, you know which I shouldn't stop on because that's nobody, obviously nobody else, else is going to do that. So, um, and I kind of left them in an, an, an unusual arrangement that was making it inconvenient for the water spiders bringing the, you know, bringing the empty pallets in. Like I'm causing them some congestion. So, uh, anyway, um, because I didn't, I wasn't expecting them to have me working in trucks because there were so many other forklift, you know, more seasoned forklift drivers there. Um, anyway, when I got, get a long way to get to the comic relief, aren't I? Welcome to my stories. Anyway, um, so he goes, oh, well, yeah, I need, you know, and he told me what, what bay. He goes, yeah, I need that, that truck unloaded. And I said, I said, well, I saw him, he's just down there with his, you know, reading a book and he goes yeah no i'd rather have you do it anyway he just sits there and reads that's his thing and i'm like i'm like really it's like okay and which i'm thinking is really odd like like how does he not get fired for that 
not like I'm trying to get the fire. They got fired. That's not my deal. But I'm just a little bewildered. Like, I mean, I see him when he's working. He works his ass off. And, he, you know, he's, I mean, he unloads the truck a whole lot faster and with less problems than I do. So, you know, there's that. But, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like when I'm not unloading a truck, I've, I've got other work to do. There's always other work to do. And it just seems like if he's that unloaded truck, he's just sitting there reading. And when there's a truck to unload, like, He's not even, he's oblivious to it because he's sitting there reading. So anyway, Larry's like, like, oh yeah, he reads. Yeah, he probably reads like, I forget the number he threw. He threw out a number kind of a high number. He reads some X, you know, books a month. He's a, he's an avid reader. I said, yeah, I used to read a lot like that. He goes, really? I said, yeah. Then I got out of prison <laughs> and he just... He just lost his, like, whoa. He just he started laughing, but he had this look on his face like, oh, damn. <laughs> I just kind of left it at that. That's, uh, um, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, I love reading. And I used to read a lot of books when I was, a you know, a teenager. But since becoming an adult, the only time I ever do an extensive amount of reading is when I'm incarcerated. And when I'm incarcerated, I read a lot. <laughs> so, but yeah, I wouldn't dream of doing it at work. There's just too much stuff to be done there. But hey, if they let him get away with it and he enjoys it, more power to him. Anyway, wow, almost 52 minutes. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for caring. I'll, uh, I'll be back with more. <laughs> Jeez, it's time to get me some liquid breakfast.